Today we're going to talk about 15 champions whose value has never been higher inside the game than it is right now. These 15 champions, really everybody is talking about, whether it's Doom Tower Waves, Doom Tower Bosses, Stages 21 through 25 of Dungeons. We're going to give you guys some awesome options in case you may not have considered these champions uh, in terms of in your vault or champions that you're maybe on the fence about building out, right? So this is my Stage 24 Dragon A dragon, Ash, what? Spider team, as you guys can see. And it's uh, what I decided to do is it, on a few of these champions, actually a bunch of these champions, we're going to give you kind of demonstrations on how I'm using these champions as well. So you guys can kind of get a feel for, you know, why people are talking about these champions. So this is stage 24, which is the best stage to farm inside the new dungeons in terms of energy, you know, efficiency and optimization. So that's why we're starting here. I'm going to show you stage 24 and 25 as we talk about a few of the champions on our list. So number one, by far and away here is going to be Mordecai. Mordecai was part of the uh, Brogni fusion, and he is a champion who is so incredibly good, probably the best in the game going in terms of spider. Uh, right there alongside another guy we'll talk about later on in this video, right? But Mordecai is so incredibly good. Here you can see him is anti-affinity, right? He's tanking right now for my team against Spider 24. And again, I think it was important to show you guys Spider 24 run as well. So you guys can know that, yeah, even though he's force affinity, He's still a god. Don't worry about it. 10 million damage. Uh, we have Relicry Tender. We have Cold Heart, uh, Sil the Drakes, and Miscreated Monster on this team as well. Why is Mordecai so good? Why am I using him on stage 24? Can I use him on stage 25? You can two man uh, or woman uh, stage 25 uh, if you use Achak the Wenderin as well. So both of these guys are on our list. So let's talk about why. On Mordecai, it's really simple, man. His A3, 100% chance of placing an HP burn debuff on all enemies for two turns, okay? That's all you need to know about Mordecai, essentially. You build him up with a lot of resist, excuse me, a lot of defense. So he's resisting the poisons. He has enough defense and HP to survive, especially anti-affinity. And then he's placing the HP burn. So it's not placing off of a critical hit. So you're guaranteed HP burn on everybody. So that's why Mordecai's on the list. He's the best spider tank right now in the game going right there with, again, a couple legendaries who we'll talk about. But I prefer Mordecai because on Mordecai's A2, he also has some turn meter manipulation. Just decrease the chance of turn meter of all enemies by 15%. Fills the turn meter of all allies by 15%. Might not sound like much, but that's a perfect addition to a spider kit. We don't want to do damage to the spiderlings anyway, so it's better than an AoE attack to have that turn meter. So Mordecai is number one on the list for obvious reasons. Achak the Wenderin, as we watch these guys in action, heals all allies by 5% of their max HP. Every time an enemy under an HP burn debuff gets a turn, fills a turn meter by 10% every time someone under a freeze gets a turn. So now watch these guys together. It's madness, okay? So we have a shield champion. It works with still the Drakes as well, right? But we have Miscreated Monster for shield. We have the freeze, and now we have the HP burn being placed. So now look at our turn meter, guys. Look at our turn meter. Look at our heals. This is all at check the Wenderin's passive. So you can see why he's going to be champion number two on our list. I'll check the Wenderin again. You can see that he is force affinity. Now he does not work. Ash, if you do a guide on Elder Scar, what, what, what? If you do a guide on Elder Scar, I recommend you pairing him with Contra the Cyclone and Syl. LOL, but Contra is good and not a usual for you. Okay, that's fair enough. Fair enough. You guys want to see a uh, an updated uh, guide? Uh, we'll go ahead and do that on Elder Skarg. Anyway, he's not on the list today, by the way. But you guys can see now we're getting into the groove of things. This is about a minute and a half, two minute team here on Spider 25. And, you know, there's no real reason to uh, farm level 25 levels unless you're a big fan of wasting your energy or unless you're a big, 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 big spender in the game. It doesn't matter. You know, $100 here or there between friends a month. No big deal. Uh, you can see the spider is going to go ahead and heal herself, but it doesn't matter. Our team is super, super strong because of the shield of Miscreated Monster or because of the heals of Sil the Drake, because of the stuns of Sil the Drake, if you have her in that role. Uh, but this burn is just insane. And again, that turn meter on the AoE is just making sure that everybody just stays frozen in place. Nobody's dying. Everybody's alive to take the burn, to eat 
the burn and that's exactly how it works so this is the spider meta before your very eyes here guys and with all those hp burns even if you know the shield didn't go off there or or whatever it would have been uh ggs at the end of the day because there were enough hp burns and the the life of the spider is low enough anyway this is a 100 success rate run 14 million thank you so much mordecai and again a big big shout out to i check the wender and champion number two on our list so i check the wender and guys again just off that pass and having the AoE freeze plus the passive synergizing with HP burn makes him an amazing champion to invest. I'm so happy I have him on my free to play account as well. So Mordecai, I track the winder and our champions number one and champions number two. Don't worry, I'm not going to go through every single, uh, I'm not going to show you a, a dungeon run on every single one of these, but champion number three is going to be Allure. So forgive me guys while I run my main team that I've been kind of experimenting with on stage 25 here. I'm also running Seer on this team. I have ally attack. I'm trying a double ally attack team comboed with Allure. Allure's value guys, and there's a bunch of different Fire Knight teams. Uh, this is not meant to be a free to play friendly video, just kind of a warning to you guys. I'm just trying to show you how I use these champions, but suffice it to say, they can be used on many different types of teams. Psychic Whip, uh, three times at random, decrease the target's turn rate by 25% on each hit. Allure has gotten so much better because now you just can't rely on stealing 100% of turn meter with Cold Hearts or, you know, uh, Lysandra's, right? The old strategies of just running a couple Cold Hearts and it's an automatic win in Fire Knight is over, even though Cold Heart is still really, really good against Fire Knight. So that's why we're seeing more ally attack, more counter attack, and a lot of Allure. Counter ally Ally attack champions, that's one of the reasons I wanted to leave this team kind of assembled as is. Having two ally attack or even one ally attack champion with an allure just brings even more value out of her because she's using her A1 when she's joining the attack anyway, which is going to further manipulate, further decrease the turn meter of the Fire Knight in this case. So, or at least get that shield down as well because now we have to think about 12 uh, rounds of that shield that we have to remove. So this team is really fun. Again, kind of experimenting with it. I don't think it's, you know, at its end point here. I don't know if it's really that efficient to run two ally attacks, Lanicus the Chosen and uh, Kirilla Witch Arm. But again, and especially right now, it's taking a little bit long here. Uh, but we'll see how, uh, you know, how fast we can take care of the uh, the Fire Knight. So back to Allure. Allure, champion number three on today's list. Not just because of Fire Knight, though. She's great against Doom Tower bosses still because it's not like Cold Heart that were coming in there. All the bosses essentially have a turn meter reductions are cut uh, in half. So 50%. And I think it's on the passive here. Let's see. Uh, yeah, all turn meter reduction effects are decreased by 50% when used against this boss. So again, it's okay because we're getting three individual 25%. And then with ally attack, we just keep chipping away at that turn meter. Check it out here, guys. She's going to go now. There she goes. Turn meter down. Hopefully an ally attack will proc right now before the fire knight goes. Let's see. Come on. Oh, she. yeah, maybe, maybe. Nope. Okay. I wasn't sure if that was Kirilla's uh, A2 or not. Okay. We'll get it on the next run, but basically that's the idea, right? Run some ally attack or counter attack with a lure in its really uh, consistent way of beating the Fire Knight. Now you can see it's game over with two ally attacks and a lure on the team and the health or the turn meter that low once we get the shield down. That's all we really need. And there we go. Now we have the ally attack joining in. There's the A1 and turn meter again gets kind of reset on the Fire Knight here. So not the fastest time. I know there's some faster speed run times out there, but I love this because it really lets Allure shine and she's the positive affinity matchup as opposed to negative affinity against uh, stage 25 at least of the Fire Knight if maybe you guys are trying to accomplish that for the first time for a quest or whatever. So Allure is going to be champion number two and also on this team uh, that we'll talk about that's also on the list is Seer. Seer is just so incredibly good right now everywhere in the game, especially with the new levels of uh, all these dungeons, whether you're farming 24 or 21 or heck even 20. Uh, not only is she the best wave killer, but now she is so far separated from the rest of the pack because she's the one true champion, the one true dungeon nuker 
who can just absolutely annihilate everybody still uh, because it's based on enemy max HP, but all the buffs that you're removing. So you stack her with enough buffs and she can still one shot waves. Nobody else in the entire game can come close to doing that right now. So Seer just continues to have a kind of value surge in this game. And you can see why, right? She, she really did a number on both of the waves on this Fire Knight 25 run. So that is Seer as well. Let's move on to champion number five. As soon as we kill this Fire Knight in here it goes. Boom. There we go. So, yeah, still kind of messing around with this team, but I like it so far. I like running two of the ally attacks with Allure. Champion number five on today's list will stay with the dungeon example. I'm going to give you a champion number five and six on the same team. Okay, so this is not the most optimal team in the world, but I want to prove a point here. Both Richtoff the Bold with a bunch of poisons on his A3 against now a strong affinity in Dragon 25. And same thing with Tomb Lord. Both of these champions in the right gear, which I don't have them in godlike gear right now, uh, can solo the Dragon 25, right? They're both two of the better champions now in the game, going from being very kind of, eh, I wouldn't say mediocre, I'd say slightly above average on both of these champions, but now look at them with Bad Elkazar on Dragon 25, right? First of all, again, strong affinity matchup, uh, e even affinity for Bad Elkazar. Bad El in either one of these champions can solo it even in mediocre gear, but I'm running them both just to kind of prove a point and check two champions off of our list. So Richtoff the Bolt, as I mentioned, guys, uh, a strong affinity, and he deals three poisons to every enemy on a three-turn cooldown. Same thing with Tomb Lord. They have a very kind of similar-ish ability in their kit where they're landing a ton of poisons. We know from years and years and years of Dragon 20 how effective poison strategies are against the dragon, right? So what better combo? Combination than both of these guys and we get the decrease attack and decrease defense from Tomb Lord as well so we also play as kind of double role as our debuffer on the team on his A3 and some turn meter as well so I'll come back to you guys when we get to the dragon we'll see the total damage so here we are at the dragon guys I'll let you see a little bit of the fight as well essentially it's just a ton of poisons landed on the dragon doing a ton of damage and there we go Bad, also, a bad L also kind of stripping away the poisons that uh, are put on us. So again, this can be ac accomplished now with, with not all three of these champions. I'm just running them together to show you guys. Uh, but yeah, man, check that out. Rick top the bull, 3.3 million damage. Bad L and Tomb Lord, 2 million each. Definitely champions we're looking into if you want to attempt to clear Dragon's Lair 25. I don't think a lot of people are struggling with the new level 20 or the new levels of the dragons if there were people who already cleared Dragon 20 like a while ago right so uh, those are my best teams for those three dungeons now you guys have seen let's go ahead and move on to i'm just going to show you a quick run in arcane keep to spotlight this champion here and it is i should probably show you these uh, the kits and all these champions too it's sissy of flame tongue she's now she's absolutely skyrocketed as one of my favorite nukers inside this entire game she is a legendary so i'm not gonna spend a ton of time on her but she has an aoe attack with a weaken also has decreased defense if there are two enemies under hp burn and then instantly activates any hp burn debuff on each target and decreases the duration of those HP burns by one turn. So we're getting that instant activation of HP burn in her kit. She also has an HP burn on herself for three turns, then AoE on every enemy with a place of placing or a chance of placing more HP burn grants an extra turn if HP burn is placed on all enemies, which actually isn't that hard to do. She deals just an incredible amount of damage. This is like my all out nuke team. Uh, like the best I can come up with for Arcane Keep 20 or whatever. And the reason I want to show you this is the same kind of thing that we did on the other dungeons, right? It's not about, oh, this is the best team, all legendaries, guys. It's about just seeing her where I actually use her and how much damage she can put out. So there she goes. Again, she lands HP burn on every enemy. She gets an immediate AoE attack right after that. And her A1 deals a lot of damage. I believe it's a triple hitter. So we're talking about Giant Slayer Mastery on this champion as well. Man, Sissia Flame Tongue is the real deal. I'm sure there's a more efficient or faster team that I could possibly run uh, for Arcane Keep to a 20. However, just in some quick testing in bed where I do my best testing, I get to lay in a bed by myself all of my life. It's fantastic. This was this was the team. This was the team that could consistently uh, beat uh, the Arcane Keep in like 55 seconds or so. Uh, however, my gut tells me there's got to be a Seer team, right? Doesn't it always come down to Seer somehow? <laughs> so, Cupidus, by the way, people sleep on Cupidus, man. He's not on my list, 
but he's one of the better champions. But yeah, Sissia Flame Tongue, I don't show her Ar- I don't show you guys Arcane Keep to be like, yeah, it's Arcane Keep. It's really to show you guys, and look how much damage Cupid has put out, man. I mean, that's insane. But over longer prolonged battles, especially when you need an HP burn champion, Sissia also came in second place in terms of the damage output, and she's just an amazing champion, especially against bosses. I use her in a variety of different areas in the game, along with my main spider team as well, uh, not the one that I just showed you guys. I think that her and, you know what, let's just go ahead and talk about them right now. Ignatius are two champions that because it's HP burn meta officially, which actually feels pretty cool after years and years and years of what felt like poison reign supreme, now against these bosses, I feel like HP burn is in. HP burn defense based champions, I feel like even more so. So a champion like Ignatius was a, an above average champion for years in this game, and now he's really close to that S tier level. An AOE provoke, and an AoE HP burn. So good against HP burn bosses, good against bosses where you need to provoke them, such as the Magma Dragon. Ignatius is one of my favorite champions out there inside the game. Granted, this run, he has an anti-affinity against the Magma Dragon, but heck, some people build him as a tank as well. He has defensive aura in all battles by 25% as well. So Sissia Flame Tongue and Ignatius are both officially on the list. Let's talk about some of the... Uh, the other champions that you have seen already in today's video, I had to include Coltar, which is kind of weird to say because she did get a nerf, there's no doubt about it. However, with all that said, we're still seeing a bunch of Coltar in Fire Knight. We're still seeing a bunch of Coltar in Spider. 100% turn meter on her Heartseeker. 100% decrease of turn meter is still 100%. So it's still 50% now with the new buff to those new bosses. And people still use Coltar against a bunch of the Doom Tower bosses as well. So Coltar, as I showed you guys, I use Coltar inside my main. I'll show you my, uh, I'll show you the team I just use in Doom Tower Scarab Keep because I just did it right before I record this video. Uh, and that will bring us to our next champion as well. But, you know, this team, again, pretty pay to win, mis mixed with a little bit of tiny, tiny, tiny bit of free to play. Thank you, that solves most of my problems. Uh, but this is a, a good team because it demonstrates the retained value, if not even more value, because all the other max HP champions, not all, but Royal Guard, Septimus, they really took a value hit, right? Like a pretty big value hit. But champions like Coltart and Armager, who brought more to the table in the turn meter as well, they're used possibly even more than they were before. So that's why we have Armager on this team as well. So I have Armager and Coltart both in Destroy Gear. We're not just using these champions against the Scarab King. However, that's an amazing use case to watch them in. So they're both really good still. So Coltart and Armager. If you're looking for Ideas are coming. Things are happening. Less costly to upgrade options that you can run all the way until the end game. You can run Cold Heart and Armor against the highest level Scarab King, right? Provided you have an OP team around them, of course. Totally not lost on me. I'm going to take you to the Scarab King, guys, and we'll finish up these two champions. All right, guys, so it took a lot longer than expected because we lost Cold Heart in the very first AoE attack by the Scarab King. Bad auto luck, but either way, the team is a consistent 100% win rate. Basically throwing a shield champion in Valkyrie, a debuffer in... Uh, Lydia and uh, that strength then also helps out a lot and Chris can kind of a support champion on the team but really having Armager with the turn meter on the A1 with the counter attack again works the same with ally attack as well but that turn meter is still effective even though it's essentially only 15% because uh, the effects are cut in half so finally able to beat the Scarab King a couple more shots or one more Armager shot let's see Let's get it. But yeah, suffice it to say, Armager being used still quite a bit inside the game. I think people who use Armager likely still use him other than really Spider, really. Uh, but but against the Doom Tower bosses, even more so now. So there we go. That's the team. Poor Cold Heart died again early. All right, guys. So sticking with Doom Tower hard, guys, we have Floor 10 Magma Dragon. And we have three champions. The next three are on the list all on this team. I cannot overstate the value of Ugo, guys. And she just keeps getting better because this having block buffs for two turns on a three-turn cooldown plus def uh, a break defense on the same ability with being one of the better healers inside the game. Ugo has just never been better and she's really, really good. One of the, I, I dare I even say, underrated champions in this game. And the only reason I say that because people who have her, you guys know how good she is. 
but I feel like she's still not getting the respect that she deserves as really legitimately being one of the best epic champions inside the entire game. I'm not being hyperbolic there. I really put her as a top five epic champion right now inside this game. By the way, we're getting a bunch, not forgetting, but we're leaving off like all the passive champions who I did another video about the Drek Stars, the Doom Priest, the all those champions, Rector Drafts with really, really good passives. Those are kind of Doom Tower specialists as I see them. And we did, already did a video kind of covering all of those champions. So Ugo on this team is going to keep everybody alive. We have Silt of the Drakes there who's going to be there to revive Vizix the Unbowed because Vizix got a big buff. If you're using Vizix, you know how good she is now. Two AoE, she puts out a sneaky amount of damage. You can put her in Lifesteal, as we're seeing here. You can put her in a stun set. You can build her out to just be a defensive juggernaut. There's a number of different ways. She has the decreased speed in her kit as well. She's such an effective support champion. She's so much better than she used to be. Again, two strong AoEs with the decreased speed, uh, with the turn meter on the A1. She's bringing a lot to the table now. She went from one of the worst, kind of a laughing stock legendary to one of I feel the more quintessential end game champions in the game especially because she's so accessible we can definitely say the same about Sylva Drakes who's also on this list I mean Sylva Drakes I mean she keeps getting better because of how effective her passive is with heals, how effective her revival is, especially when paired with Vizix, who takes a ton of damage with a three-turn ally protect for two turns. So great to have those champions on the same team. I find myself doing that quite a bit here on the channel. Ugo keeping everybody alive here as well. And you can see this is a perfect team to kind of show off the three in tandem. We also have Apothecary and Kale on the team as well. And again, guys, a very consistent team. We have that great debuffer in Ugo with those heals as well. Well, and uh, Vizix healing herself, doing a good job at that as well. And Silva Drakes, geez, the decreased speed, which is nice to have, even in addition to Vizix kind of covering each other's areas when they can't land it, you know, especially on the start of a new round. But more importantly, that revival on there with the passive and the AoE stun for waves. I mean, she just has it all. So all three of these champions do make the list. They're all absolutely incredible. Vizix, I absolutely love after that big buff that she saw. All right, guys, so the last three champions, we're just going to do light round here because I don't want to take up too too much time on this video I could show you all these guys but I looked at the teams I'm using Solus on right now and they're all disgustingly pay to win with like four void legendaries so I'll save you that and I'll just tell you that he's much better now they increased his speed from 87 to 97 right he's also placing the uh the, the provoke on a four turn cooldown with a shield on himself he has way more defense than he used to have granted the multipliers have gone down a little bit on his attacks to compensate for that but I'm I'm finding him dealing a lot more damage and he's easier to keep alive and he's much faster. So Solus definitely took a big value spike. He's great to put on a defensive team as kind of the tank for the team. Obviously, you just built him up with a ton of defense, put on a shield as well, not on him, but on an ally. And you're looking really, really good with a guy who can put out a ton of damage. Just make sure you get increased defense to put on him as well. The other guy is the same uh, kind of same situation, right? Knight Revenant. And it's Wurlam Frost King. Now we have this strengthen and increased defense on a three-turn cooldown. So strength and increased defense on three turn cooldown, only two champions in the game, him and Drakul who have that ability. And then on the AOE, on the a, on a three turn cooldown, he has uh, decreased crit damage and decreased accuracy and the debuffs cannot be resisted. Also has increased crit damage on all allies. So yeah, on a three turn cooldown, Wurlam Frost King is no joke, not a joke at all anymore. I never thought he was, but especially right now, he's much better. Think about doing an updated guide on him and maybe even Solar as well. There's one other champion that I wanted to spotlight here, guys, in today's video. It's a champion that I do not have, but boy, do I want it. It's Tyron Ixlamor, guys. This guy is so nasty right now. I wish I had him. I don't. He has a self-heal on the A1, which basically, along with the AoE HP burn on a three-turn cooldown at 100%, damage based on defense, the self-heal on the A1, ally protect, increased defense on all allies, great support champion as well, but this dude is just an ally absolute beast he can solo as well spider 25 or i should say duo with achak the winder and similar to what i showed you with mordecai at the beginning of this video this guy is a god right now in the game uh with the new dungeon levels now the hp burn is meta again wish i had him but that's going to conclude our list let me know which champion i left off the list that you guys are a big fan of in the game right now thank you for watching i really appreciate it and as always take care guys